Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'll do my best to speak up. I'm fighting a cold, but I think I'll be able to fight through it. Um, it's good to meet you all, like Aaron said. Um, it'll be two years in August since I've started, but this is my first actual field season, so it's uh, been great to finally get out and meet many of you. Uh, I think this week marks the halfway for the field tours across the state. But um, a little bit about me, since I haven't gotten to really meet you before. Um, Prior to coming here, I was at Texas A&M for six years. Um, I was a state small grains and oilseed specialist down there. Um, did, did some similar work, variety trials and ag agronomy type work down there. Um, yeah, prior to that, I actually spent uh, three years at Moscow, get my master's at U of I. Um, so that's where I first got my taste for the Palouse and, and the Northwest, which I loved it, hence I'm, I'm back here. Um, and then prior to that, I actually grew up in Pennsylvania and got a degree at Penn State um, prior to going to University of Idaho. So um, before I get started, I'll repeat what Aaron said. Um, really appreciate Hal and Ryan and Todd um, for their, their time and, and ground. Um, I'd like to thank the Grain Commission for all their support. Um, we couldn't do the trialing without uh, all the financial support that, that they give us. Um, and also thank the thank my technicians for um, planting, maintaining, and, and eventually harvesting these trials. Um, also, uh, before I forget a couple other things, if, if you haven't already, I've got a sign-up sheet there. Um, it'd be great to um, get a, a head count, but even more than that, if you put your email address, do any of you or any of you on the prelim data list serve? Do you get regular updates? Yeah. Well, if you're not, if you put your email down there. Um, I'll be sure to, to add you to the list, and that way uh, I'll periodically through the, throughout the year, I'll send updates on the trials, and even more importantly, um, as soon as the data gets harvested and turned around, that's the first place I'll send it out. So you don't have to get, you know, you don't have to continually check the, the website for when the data's posted. It'll come to your email and, and let you know when, when it's ready. Um, and then lastly, before we get started, I just wanted to put a plug in. Um, have any of you used our variety selection tool online or know about it? Yeah, a couple of you, okay. Well, <clears throat> if you haven't, a little bit of background on that. So the variety selection tool was created, uh, I don't know, eight or so years ago, I think. It's kind of a one-stop shop. Um, all of the, the information, is that information that the trials generate um, from yield, test weight, protein, planting, uh, maturity, plant height, all that, that gets distilled down into this tool along with all the other information that we generate by working with other um, researchers. So we send seed out when we get it to um, people like um, Dr. Carter will screen it for snow mold and Dr. Kim uh, Garland Campbell will screen it for winter survival. And then on the back end when we harvest it we send samples off to the wheat quality lab to run end use quality and Camille C Dr. Camille Stevers lab does falling numbers work? So all that information, all those ratings, um, we also compile that into this tool. And so it's a one-stop shop and you can sort and filter based on whatever parameters um, are most interesting or uh, most important to you. And so that worked really pretty well and still does on a desktop computer, but it's kind of atrocious when you try to look at it on a mobile device. So this spring we've developed a, a mobile app um, it, it just pulls the data directly from that website, but it makes it much, much easier to actually scroll through and, and use the tool. Um, and then the other bonus there is too, once it downloads it or accesses the website, it stores it on your phone. So even if you don't have internet connectivity, you can still use the data. So that's the other uh, positive to it. So at any rate, um, I think that's all the housekeeping type stuff. We can get started. Uh, first one on the line here, so this is our soft white winter wheat trial. We planted this on September 30th last fall. Um, first one's WA8317. That's a club wheat um, that actually will be discontinued um, due to some um, concerns over end use quality. Um, so that's about all to say about that. Uh, next is an Oregon State line ending in 755. Um, last year was the first year we had it in the trial. It, if you looked at the 2020 average for this rainfall zone, it was about average. Um, test weight was good on it. Um, and it's a little bit taller, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, had a particularly good year at uh, Harrington of all the sites, I'd say. 
Uh, the next one, UIL-7706 uh, CL Plus, first year in the trial for that one. Next, we've got SY Command. So this is an AgriPro variety that came out in 2016. Uh, we've tested it for over five years now. If you look at the long-term average, it's, it's above average for yield. It's a little bit below average on test weight. Uh, stripe rust is intermediate. It's uh, moderately high on emergence and then fairly intermediate on winter survival, Ceph stripe. A little bit, it's probably on the weaker side for snow mold. It's got good end use quality. Um, so yeah. Next is M-Press. <clears throat> so this is a McGregor company um, release from 2020. It currently is planted, it's uh, number six for acres in the state. It's got very good yield. It's got average test weight. It's gonna be intermediate, <clears throat> sorry. It's gonna be good on stripe rust. Pretty much intermediate on winter survival, snow mold. Uh, it's gonna be one of the better ones on straw breaker, but one of the weaker ones on cephalosporium stripe. Next is Puma. This is a WSU release from 2013. It's currently number 10 on acres for the state. Uh, looking at the long-term yield average, it, it's, it's close to the, the middle of the trial for both yield and test weight. I'm gonna be a little bit on the taller side. Uh, stripe rust is intermediate for Puma. Uh, again, it's got moderately high uh, emergence potential. It's got a, a pretty solid uh, package. It's got good winter survival, good straw breaker, uh, intermediate Ceph stripe, uh, maybe a little bit weaker on snow mold. Um, but falling numbers is pretty good. It's a five and it's got really good end use quality. Um, I think it was really <clears throat> one of its niches might be in, in the in no-till no systems or with where you might experience lower pH. Next is Piranha CL Plus. So Piranha, um, this is, we just named it this year. Um, if you look at the data, uh, it was previously designated as WA8305 CL Plus. Um, it's been, in, this is the third year in the trial, so we have a two year yield average for Piranha. Um, if you look at the yield history across rainfall zones, it's got really good yield, um, it's, it's very stable. It's also got uh, average or slightly above average test weight. Um, you can see it's a little bit on the taller side, pretty average maturity. Um, it's gonna be moderately susceptible for stripe rust. Uh, it's got a good, it's rated a three out of nine for winter survival, so good winter survival. Good Ceph stripe, uh, intermediate on straw breaker. Um, I'd say if you're comparing it to something like Auto, um, it's going to be pretty comparable on heading date and maturity as Auto. Um, pedigree on this is uh, Curiosity, is one of the parents. Applebee CL Plus, this is an uh, Oregon State University release, third year in the trials. Um, it's got good stripe rust resistance. It's pretty intermediate on most of the other uh, disease ratings. Uh, what you really need to know is that it's, it's typically been at the bottom of our trials pretty much every precip zone that we've tested it so far. Test weight's about average. Next is UI Magic CL Plus. Um, so this came out of the, the joint Uni University of Idaho Lima Grain uh, Breeding Program. It's currently number one for acres in the state. Um, it was released in 2015. Uh, again, it's been towards the bottom of the trial, probably in the bottom third um, over the, the last few years. Uh, test weight is good on Magic. It's going to be, as you can see, it's going to be on the shorter side a little bit. It's going to be earlier. It is probably one of the most susceptible ones in the trial for stri uh, stripe rust. Um, intermediate for winter survival, snow mold. Um, one of the better ones for straw breaker, a, a little bit weaker on Ceph stripe, but it's got good end use quality and it's rated seven out of nine on falling numbers. So a little bit more susceptible than average. The next one here is an ARS experimental club wheat. Um, first year in the trial, so no information on that yet. WA8331, same, first year in the trial. And then we have uh, Yieldstar93, same thing, first year in the trial. So next, yeah, come on down. Next is LCS Hulk. So this is a lima grain variety we've tested in the trial for five or more years. Uh, it's got really good yield potential um, based on our trials. It's towards the, it's in the top grouping for yield. It's uh, second best on test weight, so really, really good. Probably the best lima grain variety for test weight. Um, average height, maturity. It's going to be good on stripe rust. It's going to be good on winter survival. Um, it's kind of intermediate on snow mold. 
Uh, probably its its weakest feature, I would say, is going to be straw breaker. It's rated a 9 out of 9, so it's quite susceptible to that. Um, a little bit weaker on Ceph Stripe. Acceptable end use quality. It does have one of the better ratings for falling numbers, so it's going to be less susceptible than some of the other ones in the trial. Um, it did show, and I can actually see it here now. Uh, this is the first site that I've seen this year that's actually showing some uh, physiological leaf spot. Uh, that was really common last year, and it really showed up in Hulk, and I'm, I'm seeing it again this year in Hulk, too. So, um, But it, it does well pretty much across, um, especially in the drier rainfalls, and, and as you head further west, I'd say LCS Hulk really has a good fit, I think. Um, it trends towards the more towards the average of the trial, I'd say, as you head further east in the higher rainfall. WB1529 is a Westbred variety that came out in 2014. Uh, again, we've tested it in the trial for over five years. It's going to be towards the bottom of the trial again for yield. It does have excellent test weight. It's going to be shorter, average maturity. It's uh, not bad on stripe rust. It's moderately resistant. Um, going to be pretty intermediate on most of our disease ratings. Uh, it's going to be weaker on stripe, I'm sorry, weaker on straw breaker. Acceptable end use quality and intermediate on falling numbers. Uh, test weight second only to 1783 Westbred. Next is ARS Crescent. Uh, this is a club wheat. It's the number one club wheat in the state. Came out in 2011. It's been in the trials for over five years. It's uh, above average on yield. A little bit. Uh, it's going to be below average on test weight, but acceptable for for club wheat. It's resistant for stripe rust. It's good on uh, winter survival. It has excellent in-use quality, and it's going to be kind of in that moderately susceptible range for uh, snow mold, straw breaker, Ceph stripe, uh, and falling numbers as well. Probably, I'd say Crescent's probably one of the most widely adapted. It does pretty well everywhere. Um, I would say in, in this rainfall zone, it's, it's kind of a toss-up between Crescent, Costella, Pritchett, as far as who's going to be the, the top yielder. Um, Let's see, in this, in this zone, it's going to have better test weight and falling numbers than Pritchett, and it's going to tie Costella for yield. Next, we've got AP Dynamics. This is an AgriPro release from 2020. Uh, we've got two years of data of Dynamic in the trial. Um, if you look at the yield history, it's above average, a little bit below average on test weight. It's got good resistance to stripe rust. And an overall pretty good disease package. Um, it's rated five or four for winter survival, straw breaker, Ceph stripe. Uh, acceptable end use quality. Um, I'd say it, it performs fairly comparable to what you'd expect Jasper um, to perform. LCS Sonic, uh, this is a lima grain variety that's been in the trial again for over five years. It's got above average yield, below average test weight, resistant for stripe rust. Uh, you can see some uh, physiological leaf spotting on it there. It's uh, winter survival is good, snow molds intermediate. It's got desirable end use quality. Um, if you're comparing it to some of the other Lima grains, it's got pretty comparable yield to LCS Hulk. So it's going to be uh, not a bad variety for this, this area. Last one for the soft whites in this range is Devote. This is a, a newer WSU release from 2019. Um, this is the fourth year in the trial. It, looking at it, you can see it, it looks a lot like Auto. Um, it's uh, looking at the yield hist the three-year yield history. It's it's at or maybe even slightly below average, uh, just by two or three bushels. It's got very good test weight. It's intermediate on stripe rust, uh, but has a really solid uh, agronomic package. It's going to be one of the best ones for winter survival, snow mold, and straw breaker, and Ceph stripe. So it, it's really across the board is, is pretty good. And, and no issues on end use quality either. It is a little bit more susceptible on falling numbers. It's rated a 7, so I put it on par with what you'd see with maybe a Curiosity. <clears throat> um, the other thing about the vote, if you compare it to Auto, um, the vote's supposed to be you know, handled drought like you would expect auto to handle drought pretty well. Um, we've seen auto though, it, it, on these wetter years that we've been experiencing, you know, auto doesn't necessarily rise towards the top, um, doesn't take advantage of the extra moisture, and that's what Devote's supposed to do. It's supposed to be able to have kind of a wider range and be a little bit more flexible handling both the dry and even the wetter conditions, um, taking advantage of that. Any more questions on the first range? The first one here is WA8332. That's the first year for that experimental. 
The second one here is Oregon State line ending in 22. Uh, this one uh, was in the trial for the first time last year. It's a club, as you can see. Um, it was in the bottom third of the trial for yield. It was average for test weight and pretty average for height and maturity. Maybe a little bit shorter. Uh, WB 1783. So w West Bray came out with this in 2017. Uh, we have got a three year average uh, yield history for it. Um, it's probably the best yielding of the West Bread entries that we have. Having said that again, it's probably still close to the trial average. Um, it's got the best test weight in the trial. It's intermediate on stripe rust. It's good on winter survival. A little bit poor on snow mold. Um, the thing to really remember about 1783 is it's uh, one of the only two in the trial that is rated least desirable for end use quality. Um, so we're hoping we can replace that with some other ones to kind of maintain our, our excellent standard in the, in the global market for quality. WA8333, first year in the trial. <clears throat> the next one here is VI Presto CL Plus. Um, it was just named this past year, so this came out of the Lima Grain um, University of Idaho Joint Breeding Program. It was previ previously designated as UIL 17-6451 CL Plus. Um, you can see it's kind of struggling here a little bit. Um, if you look at the, the two-year yield history, it was close to the trial average. Uh, it was above average on test weight. Um, it was resistant for stripe rust, good on winter survival, intermediate on straw break or ceph stripe. Um, yeah. Next is Zerfa. You're probably familiar with Zerfa. It's been around a while. It came out in 2008 from WSU. Um, on the five-year average, it's, it's one of the best ones for yield. It's average on test weight. Uh, it's going to be weaker on stripe rust. Um, you can see this one also tends to get the physiological leaf spotting on it. Uh, that was really noticeable last year. Um, it's going to be uh, good on winter survival, intermediate snow mold. And like WB1783, uh, Zerfa is another one that's got that least desirable uh, rating for end use quality. So if you can find something else that yields as good or better, um, we encourage you to find, uh, choose one of those. Uh, w LWW ending in 587, first year in the trial. Uh, VI Frost, so the, the VI start, stands for the Varsity Idaho. Again, that's that uh, joint Lima Grain Idaho breeding program. Um, this is the fourth year in the trial for Frost. Looking at the yield history, it's close to the average for both the yield and test weight. It's going to be resistant to stripe rust, uh, really good on winter survival, intermediate on uh, snow mold. Also pretty good for straw breaker and ceph stripe. So pretty, pretty solid agronomic package overall for, for frost um, and very good or mo uh, most desirable for end use quality. Next is Pearl. This is a WSU release from 2017. Um, it's traditionally been tested in the high rainfall. Um, last year was the first year we tested it in the low rainfall zones. Um, so based on the 2020 average for the region, it was close to the, the trial average for yield. It was above average for test weight. Pearl was moderately susceptible for stripe rust and pretty intermediate for winter survival, straw breaker, ceph stripe. Uh, it has acceptable end use quality. And for falling numbers, again, it's going to be close to like Curiosity. It's rated a 7 out of 9 for falling numbers. Um, yeah. Uh, next is Midas. So this is a um, McGregor Company variety. Last year was the first year in our trials. Um, based on the 2020 average, it probably did the best in this rainfall zone. Um, it, particularly up here around the Highway 2 corridor. If you look down in Anatone, which is technically the same rainfall zone, it didn't do as well. But up here, it yielded, it was above average in, in pretty much Reardon, Crest, and Elmira uh, area. Um, having said that, even though it had good yield history last year, uh, I would have concerns. Uh, the winter survival is rated an 8 out of 9, so it's one of the more susceptible ones um, for, for cold um, susceptibility. It is rated resistant for stripe rust, intermediate for straw breaker, ceph stripe. Um, yeah. First year for this exper AgriPro experimental. First year, uh, no, we tested 
LWW 5815 last year for the first time. Um, last year it was above average for both yield and test weight, average maturity and height. And then first year for 8334. Next we've got Norwest Tandem. So Tandem is an OSU Lima Grain joint release from 2016. It's currently number five on Planet Acres. It's uh, average for yield, average for test weight. As you can see, it's one of the shortest ones in the trial, uh, similar to LCS Shine. Um, it's also going to be um, earlier. It's got a, a pretty solid agronomic package. It's resistant to stripe rust. It's good on winter survival. Uh, one of the best ones for straw breaker rating. Um, intermediate for snow mold and um, Ceph stripe. Um, acceptable end use quality and also one of the better ones for falling number ratings as well. So pretty solid package overall. Uh, this is basic the zinc Puma treatments, just a kind of a fill. Uh, next we've got Resilience CL Plus. So this was released by WSU in 2016. Uh, it's number nine for planted acres in the state overall. If you're comparing it to other clear fields, it's number four. Um, resilience was close to the trial average last, um, last year. It's above average for test weight. Uh, unlike Stingray, it's going to be resistant for stripe rust. It's uh, intermediate for snow mold, Ceph stripe, and again, one of the best ones for straw breaker. It's rated a three out of nine. LWW 8185, first year in the trial. And then the last one in this range is Jasper. Um, Jasper was released in 2014 from WSU. It's in the top grouping for yield, so it has really good yield history in this region. It's uh, below average on test weight. It's got really good stripe rust resistance, uh, intermediate for most of our other ratings, winter survival, snow mold, uh, Ceph stripe, really good end use quality. The thing you got to remember about Jasper is we know that it has falling number issues. So, any other questions on this range? Can, can I talk a little bit about the zinc for a quick sec? Sure. Um, sure. You'll see the on this particular one, it's just Puma. It's been treated the same as the other Puma, except it has seed applied zinc on it. Um, and then if you go back, if you're looking through any of the data sets from WSU, I think from two, three years ago, you're gonna find either in the DNS or in the soft whites springs, you're gonna see a zinc treatment in there as well. So you can get an idea of what that seed applied zinc is doing across a wide variety of areas across the region. Which zinc? Um, I think in this particular case we're using the McGregor's um, blend. So, so just I, I get a lot of questions whether or not you need to be putting zinc on or no, no zinc and everything else. So there's a, a pretty good data set across a lot of regions on the spring side. Now we're finally starting to get a little bit of data on the winter side as well. So our first one on this range is Otto. I referenced it earlier when I was talking about the vote. So Devote, think of Devote as maybe the replacement for Auto here. Um, this came out in 2000, 2011 from WSU. It's currently number four on Planted Acres. Um, like I mentioned earlier on the five-year average, uh, Auto's been at or maybe a couple bushels below the trial average. Um, again, Auto is really known for being more drought tolerant, so being on, on the wetter side for the last several years, um, it, it's not been quite as competitive. But it's not bad on, on test weight. It's intermediate on stripe rust. Um, probably the other thing Otto is really known for is its emergence. It's probably got one of the best emergence in the trial. Um, but it also has really good winter survival, snow mold, um, straw breaker. Um, not bad on Ceph stripe. It's got desirable end use quality. And it's rated a six on um, falling numbers. So not, not too bad on that. Uh, this experimental 13-55305-1A uh, is a Lima Grain University of Idaho release, first year in the trial. Uh, VI Voodoo CL Plus. Um, this was been in the trial for three years in the high rainfall, but this is the first year that we're testing it in the low rainfall. Um, they kind of uh, flip flop Voodoo and um, Presto. Presto is the opposite. We've been testing that for three years here, and it, they just started testing it in the high rainfall. Um, but at any rate, so because it's the first year, we don't have any yield history. 
um, but we do have some other information because we planted it uh, elsewhere. Um, so based on our other ratings, uh, VI Voodoo is rated intermediate on stripe rust. It's going to be uh, one of the lower ones for winter survival. It's rated an 8 out of 9, and it's intermediate on Strawbreaker and Ceph Stripe. Uh, it, it did do, as you move into the 16 to 20 inch rainfall zones, uh, it is in the top group, so it does have pretty good yield history over there. And it it's ties Stingray um, for kind of the average in the trial in the high, uh, in the over 20 inch. Next is Mila CL, CL Plus. <clears throat> WCU released this in 2013. Mila's planted, it's number seven for planted acres overall. Uh, it's number three for if you're comparing it to other clear field varieties. On the five year average, it's a little bit below the trial average for yield. It's average for test weight. It's going to be on the taller side and a little bit later. It's going to be intermediate, um, or well, a little bit below intermediate, moderately susceptible for stripe rust, uh, moderately high for emergence. It's good, probably the best, I'd say, for snow mold and one of the best for winter survival. Um, a little bit weaker on Strawbreaker, but not bad on Ceph Stripe. It's got acceptable end use quality. Um, if you're comparing it to, well, also this is uh, also has falling number issues, so be aware of that. Um, if you're comparing it to Curiosity, which is one of the other common clear fields out here, it typically gets about three to four bushels less than Curiosity on average. Um, there's really not a lot of other difference between Curiosity. It's got similar test weight and so forth. <coughs> LWW 5875, first year in the trial for that one. Uh, WA8290, uh, we have tested this one in the trial for four years uh, from WSU. It is very good for yield history, average for test weight. It is resistant for stripe rust and pretty, pretty solid disease package. There's really no big holes with this one. Um, pretty good on winter survival, Ceph stripe, intermediate for, for the other ratings. Um, yeah. It probably does better here, I would say, than in, in the next uh, rainfall over to the west. LCS Shine. Um, this was released in 2019 by Lima Grain. Um, I think it's, it's really started to pick up some acres. It hasn't made it on the, the variety survey yet, but I suspect that it will here in the next year. Um, it's got a really good yield. Despite being so short, it has really good yield history. Um, on the three-year average, it's, it's basically the best in this region. It's got pretty solid test weight. It's going to be shorter and early. It's good on stripe rust, intermediate for winter survival and snow mold. It's uh, four out of nine, so pretty good for Ceph stripe. It's uh, got most desirable for end use quality, and it's uh, intermediate for falling numbers. Um, if you compare it to the other Lima grain varieties in the trial, it's got about a four bushel advantage over Sonic and Hulk. Um, I'd say the test weight is pretty comparable to Sonic, um, but Hulk's probably gonna be, have a better test weight. <clears throat> Norwest Duet, you're probably familiar with this one. It's currently number three for planted acres in the state. Um, came out for, in 2016, again, from that joint uh, OSU Lima Grain Agreement breeding program. Uh, again, it's uh, one of the best ones on the five-year yield average. It's average for test weight. It's going to be one of the tallest ones in the trial, as you can see. It, it's resistant for stripe rust. It's uh, one of the better ones for emergence. Um, pretty solid across the board for ratings. Probably its weakest um, point, I guess, would be straw breaker. It's an 8 out of 9. Um, also important to note, Duet is one, has the best rating in the whole trial so far for falling numbers. So very reliable there. Next is Stingray CL Plus. Uh, WSU came out with this one. Um, it's been tested in our higher rainfall zones for a number of years. This is just the second year in this rainfall zone. So based on the 2020 yield average for this zone, it was close to the trial average as a whole for yield and for test weight. It is uh, moderately susceptible for stripe rust, so it's going to be weaker than resilience. Um, it's also a little bit on the weaker side for winter survival. Uh, not bad for straw breaker or Ceph stripe. It's good on end use quality. Um, yeah, I'd say I put it pretty comparable in this rainfall zone for yield as you would see with resilience. And it had about a three bushel better yield than curiosity. Um, also, if you're comparing test weights, it's about one pound 
uh, per bushel lower than resilience and about similar, about the same as curiosity for test weight. And speaking of which, the next one is Curiosity CL Plus. Uh, WSU released this in 2013. Um, currently, it's number two on Planet Acres, so very popular variety. Um, it's at or maybe just a couple bushels below the trial average on the five year for yield. It's average for test weight. Uh, it is going to be on the taller side for yield or on the height um, and one of the later ones in the trial for maturity. Uh, it's moderately susceptible for. Stripe rust, moderately high for emergence, uh, one of the best, if not the best one in the trial for winter survival, it's rated a one out of nine. It's one of the best ones for snow mold. Um, probably it's, its weakest points I would say are gonna be for straw breaker. And again, that falling numbers we know uh, tends to show up more in curiosity than some of the other ones. <clears throat> the next one, Oregon State, uh, ending in 25. Uh, first year in the trial for this one, for this Idaho experimental, and for this Lima Grain 5080, all first years. So the next one we'll talk about is ARS Costella. So this is a club release from USDA from 2017. Uh, we do have five years of data on this or more. Uh, if you compare it to the trial as a whole, it is above average for yield. Um, it's average for test weight. Um, so if you're comparing it on test weight, um, if you compare all the clubs, I'd say you start out with Briel at the bottom, then Pritchett comes, is a half step better than that, then, then Crescent, and then Costella, I'd say, is the, is the best for test weight out of all the clubs. Um, and that's true here, moving further east. Uh, Costella test weight uh, drops off a little bit as you head into the drier country, though. Um, so more about Costella, it's got a good stripe rust resistance, it's got good winter survival, and pretty much intermediate for the other ratings. Uh, it's not bad, intermediate again for falling numbers, and most desirable for end use quality. Uh, next is Pritchett, our, our last uh, club that we'll talk about in the trial here. Uh, USDA released this in 2015, so this is the number three club planted in the state. It's above average in yield, below average in test weight, uh, moderately resistant for stripe rust, uh, moderately high for um, emergence. So that's something I would say Pritchett does have over Costella is a little bit better emergence potential. Um, but pretty solid package um, across the board, fours and fives for winter survival, straw breaker, and so forth. Um, desirable end use quality. Um, but again, the thing to point out, know about Pritchett is the falling numbers. It's going to be uh, very susceptible to that. One of the first ones to show that if you're going to see it. First year for GS2. Uh, this is the second year for Yield Star Serial 215. Um, based in this rainfall zone, it was below average for yield. It was above average for test weight. Um, pretty typical height maturity. Uh, it is, it's, I would rate it with uh, UI Magic as being the most susceptible in the trial for stripe rust. And the only other note we have on it is winter survival, and it does have good winter survival. And then uh, this ARS Club Experimental, last year was the first year for it, and it was below average for yield, and it was last in the trial for test weight. Any more questions on these varieties? Okay, we can move on to the hards.